Hello and welcome to Generation Impact Bible College. My name is Ashlyn. I'm one of the graduates from the college and I will be your lecturer for this session. In this session, we're diving into topic number 24 on hearing the voice of God. So I'm going to pray for us and then we'll jump straight in. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for the honor and privilege of gathering around your word today. Lord, I just ask that as we study your word and as we hear about all the beautiful ways that you hear or that you speak to us, Lord, that you would just bring such understanding to our heart. And Father, I just pray for such a clarity, Lord, that wherever there has been confusion and uncertainty around your voice and what it sounds like and the way that you speak to us, Lord, I just pray that you would bring such clarity today in the name of Jesus. Amen. So welcome again. In this session, we are diving into hearing God's voice. And this is a topic that I have grown increasingly passionate about as I have grown in experiencing his voice and what it sounds like. For me, in my early work, walk with the Lord, I felt so much frustration around this topic of hearing God's voice. And frustration because I had such a deep desire and a passion to hear God's voice and to grow in intimacy with him and to hear what he's saying, but I just didn't know what it sounded like and I was struggling to recognize it. And although, yes, I was spending time in the word and the Holy Spirit was highlighting and speaking and revealing things, I wanted so much more and I wanted to experience God not just in the word, but in my everyday life as I was going about doing my thing and just hearing him speak to me. And so for me, it wasn't until I really began growing in and pursuing prophecy that I actively began learning what the voice of God sounds like, how he speaks to me and how to actually hear and listen to what his voice sounds like. And so for me, growing in the process of learning to hear God's voice really has become more of a process of learning to recognize his voice because he is always speaking. But unfortunately, I don't always recognize it. And especially at that time, I really didn't recognize it at all. Sometimes his voice felt so much, it felt so much like my own thoughts that I just thought it was me just thinking things. So like when I was leaving the house in the morning and you have this thought, don't forget to turn the coffee pot off or you're going about your day and just suddenly a friend, friend's name jumps into your mind. I often thought that was me until I recognized that, no, hang on a sec. This is actually the Lord speaking. Other times I would be so busy and just focused in life and going from one thing to the next that I would be so distracted that when I did hear something, I wouldn't really recognize that this was God and I didn't really even respond because I was so focused on what I was doing and where I was going and just caught up in what unfortunately sometimes is a rush of life. And so God was always speaking. I just didn't recognize it. And so I'm trusting that as we dive into the different ways that God speaks tonight, that you are going to learn to hear and recognize what his voice sounds like and what it sounds like for you. So in the introduction, it says that we must know Christ's voice. And John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And so as believers, we know that God is always speaking, that it is his heart and his desire to speak to us. He is not trying to hide his voice or hide himself from us. He is pursuing us. And so as his sheep, we have the ability to hear the voice of the shepherd. And when we hear it, we need to respond and we need to follow and we need to walk in the way that he is leading us. And so if we look at the 10 ways that God speaks to us, the first way is through the word of God, which is what I mentioned earlier, where you read and study the word and the Lord highlights things and brings things to the foreground. And that is a way that he speaks to us through his word. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So when we read the word of God, we need to remember that this is not just a book of information that helps us get to know God, 
but it is the actual spoken word of God. And so when we read the word, it is like God himself is speaking to us. In Psalm 119 verse 11 and 105, it says, For your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so we see that his word helps us to walk and grow in righteousness and the way that we as believers are called to live. But it also gives wisdom and direction for where we are now, for the next step that we need to take, but also where God is leading us and what he is calling us to do. And so the word is absolutely essential and it is such a vital and important part of hearing his voice. The second way that God speaks to us is through an inner, still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. And I think this is often the one that we can get confused um, and think that it's just us, or it's just our th thoughts, or it's just our opinions, or um, our own thinking. But as we look at Acts, we see different ways that the Holy Spirit spoke. And so in Acts 11 verse 12, it says, Then the Spirit told me to go with him, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. Acts 13 verse 2 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for, which, for the work which I have called them. Acts 16 verses 6 to 7 says, Now when they had gone through Pygaria and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they, they tried to go to Bithynia, and the Spirit did not permit them. And so through here, we see all the different ways that the Holy Spirit is speaking through guiding, instruction, cautioning, and just into the different circumstances of what to do and where to go. Um, and so this is often the one that we hear of or is also referred to as an unction of the Holy Spirit. It's where he says something to us and we follow and we follow where he's leading and we follow what he's saying. And I want you to close your eyes for a second and I want you to picture or imagine a familiar voice of someone you love and someone who is close to you. And I want you to take a second and hear that voice and then recognize and try to identify where do you hear that voice and where do you experience that voice and this will give you an idea and an indication if you feel like you've never heard the inner still small voice of the Lord this will give you an indication of where you can experience that and what it sounds like although it won't necessarily sound like your loved one <laughs> but it will give you an idea of how and where you can experience that and when it comes to the inner still small voice, this is often the one we really need to grow in recognizing what is God speaking and what is us. And for me, the process of recognizing in this area has often been in hindsight. As I look back, I see, oh, wait, that wasn't just my thinking. That was actually God saying something. That was God leading. That was God directing. That was God reminding me of something that was important. And, oh, okay, so if I experience that again, I need to learn to respond and to do it in that moment because I love how faithful the Holy Spirit is to remind me of things. But when he reminds me of things, I need to be obedient to do it in that moment or else I may forget again. Um, and so this is the inner still small voice of the Holy Spirit. And a beautiful thing is as we learn to grow in recognizing what the voice of God sounds like for us, we'll also begin to recognize it in the people that are close to us, in the people that we spend a lot of time with. And I'll give you an example. My mom, my sister and I went on holiday the one time to a forestry area and we were having a walk around and we decided we wanted to turn right into this one road. And as we were about to turn right, my sister just said, mm, I don't have a good feeling about this. I don't think we should go that way. Let's just keep going straight. And so because we as a family have grown in hearing the voice of God and we've learned to recognize how each other hear the voice of God and what it sounds like when they hear the voice of God, 
we actually recognize in this moment that hang on a sec this is not just you speaking this is actually the Lord is saying something to you and although you don't understand it and you can't explain why we shouldn't go that way you were just responding to what you were feeling the unction of the Holy Spirit within you and so we recognized we agreed and so we just kept walking straight and we went down a different road but do you know what that does for a relationship when we begin to, as a family, as married couples, actually learn to honor and recognize when the other person hears God's voice in moments that sometimes we might not. And it's not a case that God speaks to others and they don't speak to us. No, he speaks to all of us. But just in different moments, in different settings, we experience him differently. And so in that moment, he highlighted this to my sister. And in another moment, he might highlight something to me, but it might not always make sense. And we might not always be able to explain it and understand it. But it's important that when we recognize the unction of the Holy Spirit, that we listen and that we respond to it. And a great way, if you want to grow in trying to recognize the unction of the Holy Spirit and his voice, is to start journaling. Um, is to sit with a notebook and a pen and perhaps ask the Lord a question and say, God, what do you say about this? What do you think about this? What is your heart for me in this area of my life? And actually wait on him and write down what you feel him saying. And as you go over time, this will help you grow in recognizing and hearing his voice so that you can respond to what he is saying and where he's leading. Number three, another way God speaks to us is through the advice of godly men and women. In Proverbs 12 verse 15, it says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds wise counsel, or he who heeds what counsel is wise. And so when we talk about um, getting advice from godly men and women, we're not just talking about getting advice from anyone. It is godly men and women which means people who are invested in you, people who are praying for you, people who are hearing God's voice on your behalf and who can speak into areas of your life or decisions that you're needing to make or just areas that you're needing advice on. Because if we just seek advice from anyone, we will get advice because everyone often has an opinion, sometimes more often than we like, but it's not necessarily God's opinion. It's not necessarily God's heart and what God is saying to us. And so it is important for us that when we seek godly counsel is to seek it from people who we know are mature in their faith, who hear the word of God, who are rooted and grounded in the word um, and who hear his voice. And I'll give you an example. A couple of years ago, I was needing to make or I wanted to make a really big decision in terms of my work and future and career and the direction I was going in. And because of how big the decision was and because of the financial implications, I wanted to know 100% that what I was feeling was God and what I was sensing he was saying really was him and not just the desires of my own heart. And so I messaged three friends that I knew, pray that I knew would pray for me, pray for the situation, that they would hear from God for me and on my behalf and share it with me. And so two or three weeks later, they each came back to me with what they felt God was saying. And can I just also say, I didn't tell them what I was thinking or planning. I just said to them that I've got a really big decision to make and I'd love for you to pray with me about it. And if you feel God saying anything, please share it with me. That's all they knew. They didn't know anything else because I also didn't want them to be influenced by the details and the facts of it. I wanted to hear what God was saying, irrespective of what the facts were. And so they each came back to me and it was amazing because what they shared absolutely confirmed what I felt God was saying on the one hand. On the other hand, through some of the pictures and the words that they shared, and so pictures we're gonna to touch on a bit further down the page, but through some of the pictures that they shared, it actually gave voice and gave words to what I was feeling and sensing that God was saying 
about this next season, but I just didn't know how to put it into words. And so it really brought so much peace. It brought so much comfort. It brought so much courage to make such a big decision in that moment. On the other hand, I had another friend who was a really close, who is a really close friend and her boss gave her a proposal at work. And so she messaged myself and a few other friends to say, this is what her boss is proposing. Can we just pray about it and let her know what we feel the Lord is saying? And so I sat with it and I prayed into it and I just felt such a sense of caution and I felt such a sense of um, deception or manipulation. And so I shared this with her and again, know that we are really close friends and so we do have a nature and a relationship um, that we can share these things and so I shared this with her and I said this is what I'm feeling and sensing the Lord saying but please let me know does this resonate with you and with what you're hearing and with what you're feeling the Lord saying and if it doesn't then you know let's talk about it let's pray about it um, and she actually came back and said no this absolutely resonates with what she feels because although what he was proposing sounds amazing there was just this element of maybe deception and manipulation and just some underlying hidden motives and in this moment what looked really great the Lord was warning and cautioning about and so again when we seek counsel when we seek advice when we give advice to people or even words or prophetic words it is so important for us to get feedback on these things and to ask them, hey, how was that received? Did it resonate with you? Did it resonate with what the Lord was saying to you? Or did it resonate with peace within you? Like, do you recognize, is this God? And it's so beautiful because it's in this process of feedback that we really begin to learn and grow how we hear the voice of God and what is him and what isn't him and places where um, yeah, maybe he's speaking and then we kind of felt him stop speaking but we kept on speaking and that kind of thing and so getting feedback is so important because as humans we are not perfect there are times when we do miss it um, and so it really is important for us to get feedback so we can learn and grow in hearing the voice of God and know that the words that we are giving, what we are sharing is also accurate and true. So number four, the fourth way we hear God's voice is through the audible voice of God. And this we see in Acts 9 verses 4 to 5, where it says, Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Now, when it comes to the audible voice of God, I personally have never heard the audible voice of God. But as we see in scripture, and as we hear from many in this day and age, that the Lord does speak audibly to some people, not necessarily to everyone, although we don't all necessarily experience it, but this is a way that he speaks. And so, yeah, we need to be open to hearing his voice in this area. Number five, through dreams. Matthew 1 verses 20 to 21 says, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. And so dreams is an incredible way that God will speak to us about a situation, that he will speak to us prophetically about what's coming up ahead, um, or even give warning or caution. Um, but it's really important for us to be able to discern the difference between a godly dream and just our subconscious processing something from the day. And so often a godly dream is a dream that is really, really vivid and clear. And that is one of the ways that you can tell the difference. And so as with any way that we hear the Lord or any way that he speaks to us, we need to steward what he says well. And so one of the ways we can steward our dreams is to write them down, to record them, 
to pray into them and to also trust the Lord for an interpretation of them of this is what you saw in a dream but Lord what are you saying and what does it mean and although there are some standard things that we use for dream interpretation so in dreams certain things mean certain things but God will speak to you in your own language in a way that you can understand as well in, in ways that are meaningful and significant to you and so it's important for us to record our dreams and to sit with the Lord and ask him for the interpretation of it so that we can get understanding so that we can follow him and so that we as his sheep can respond and follow where he's leading number six is through visions in Acts 10 verses 9 to 18, it says, The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near to the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they were made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at four corners descending to him and laid down to earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. And so when it comes to visions, there are two different types of visions we get in two different ways. So we get we can experience visions either in our natural world around us, which is what Peter experienced, where it feels like the spirit is almost transposed over the natural. The other way we see and experience visions is within our spirit and within us, which is basically the Lord will use our imagination, but it's not coming from us. It's not something we're conjuring up or imagining ourselves, but it is a picture that the Lord is showing us on the screen of our imagination. And these pictures can either be motion pictures, like what Peter experienced, or they can be static pictures, like what we hang on a wall. And so this is an incredible way um, that God does speak to us. And this is one of the ways he also uses for us to share prophetic words with people and to hear from him and to hear what he's saying. And I love this because some people are more visual orientated in terms of their learning than they, what they are audibly. And so I feel like there is a space where there are a whole lot of ways that God speaks to us, but he's also going to speak to us in a way that will grab our attention, that will uh, resonate with us personally. And so pictures is just one of the ways that he can and does speak to us. Um, and so, yeah, I want to encourage you again. This is another area that we can practice hearing the voice of God in. Number seven, through angels. And this comes from Luke 1 verses 9 to 18. And this says, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And a whole multitude of people were praying outside at that hour of incense. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah and turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, how shall this be? For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. And so angels is an incredible way that God uses to speak to us, to minister to us. And as you see, Zacharias had a conversation with an angel. And so when we talk about angels, we're not talking about the way that the world portrays angels, which is a little cupid with a bow and arrow. 
But angels will often appear in human form and that is how they will often come to us. On our property at home, we have a cottage that we rent out. It's a fully furnished cottage we rent out. And there was a season where just no one was looking at renting anything at that point. And so we needed someone in our cottage and we'd really been praying into it um, because this was also a financial source of income for us. And so one day this random guy showed up, he wanted to rent the cottage. And so he rented the cottage for a month and he was unlike any guest or tenant we've ever had in our cottage. He left for work in the morning, really early. He came back late at night. Um, we hardly saw him. We hardly ever, we didn't really ever speak to him. Um, and when our cleaning lady went up there once a week to go and clean and change his linen, there was no laundry to be done. There was no clothes in the cupboard and there were no dishes dirty in the sink. It was as if, I mean, the place was immaculate. It was as if nobody was staying there, but this gentleman was there. And so we were absolutely convinced that he was an angel, that he was sent by the Lord at that specific timing um, to meet our need. And for us, that was a huge blessing. And what it just communicated to us in that moment was so significant. And so angels are a way that God will use to speak to us. Number eight is by our circumstances. Acts 16 verse 6 says, Now when they had gone through Bulgaria and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Sometimes the Lord will use a set of circumstances to speak to us. And so in those times, we won't necessarily hear the inner voice of the Spirit. Um, we won't necessarily see a picture or have a dream, but just circumstances will line up in a way that we know that this is God and this is where he's leading us and this is what he wants us to do. And often, but not exclusively, this will happen in times when we are really charged emotionally. So it will often happen in times where we are really overwhelmed or there's been trauma or chaos or something like that. And it's in a time and a season where we, we might struggle to hear that in a still small voice of the Lord. And so it's times like this that God will use circumstances to lead us and guide us where he wants us to be and what he wants us to do. And I experienced this in my life near when I was near the end of matric. I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do next um, and what I wanted to study, but I knew that I didn't just want to waste time studying something I wasn't convinced about or sitting at home doing nothing. And so a company just down the road from where my mom worked reached out to her and said, hey, we're looking for someone like a school leaver who can come and just do some filing and neaten up a few filing systems in the office. If she knows of anyone, she can let them know. And so she said, well, why don't I go and do something like this? So I thought, okay, yeah, it'll give me something to do, earn an extra bit of pocket money, it'll be great. And so I did, I was there for about three weeks and at the end of the three weeks, they asked if I wanted to come back next year and actually work and help out in the office. And so I set up all the systems, so I knew what was going on and I helped out with the petty cash and the invoicing and answering the phone and that kind of thing. And I knew that this is where God was leading because I didn't hear his voice, I didn't see anything, but just the way the circumstances lined up that this guy spoke to my mom out of anyone he could have speak, spoken to. I was keen and open and willing to do something. And at the end of the three weeks, he offered me something to do next year, which again, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I didn't want to just waste time doing nothing. And I knew that this was God speaking and leading me through these circumstances. And so that was amazing. And so sometimes God does lead us through circumstances, but I feel like there's also a space where the circumstances that he lines up to lead us to will resonate with peace of God within us. And so I say that also knowing that sometimes what God leads us into is big and it can be scary because it's just might be new and different and unfamiliar. And although we can experience those emotions, at the same time, we can also have peace and confidence knowing that this is God and this is where he's leading us. So number nine, inner peace. 
And this is something you've heard me touch on a little bit so far. But in Colossians 3.15, it says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful. And this is an incredible way that God speaks to us. There are times when we won't necessarily hear his voice, have a dream, see a picture, but there will just be this peace within us that we know that this is what we're meant to do, where we're meant to go. This is the Lord speaking and leading us. And he speaks through this inner peace. And how this also really helps us is if we're sitting with decisions that need to be made and we have an option between two or more things. It's a case of when you sit with one, how does it feel? if you think about that. And then if you sit with the opposite and the other decision, how does that feel when you sit with that? And where do you have peace? And again, this is something I experienced two, three years after working for this company, I felt it was time to study. And so for me, it was a choice between graphic designing and counseling. And I sat with graphic designing and as much as I was keen and willing to learn and wanting to know about it and do it and love the creativity of it, I just, didn't have as much peace as I thought I would. And then I sat with the idea of counseling and all that it would entail. And I just had so much peace. I just felt so much peace and I felt life in that area. And so I knew that this is where God was leading me and what he was calling me to do. And so when it comes to this inner peace, we might not always be able to explain it. We might not always be able to articulate it. It might not always make sense but it is important for us to learn to recognize and respond when God leads us by that inner peace. The last one is a prophetic word. And this comes from 1 Timothy 4 verse 14, which says, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. And prophecy is something we're gonna to touch on and dive into a bit later in the college. But for now, when we talk about prophecy, we're talking about a word that is to edify, encourage, and exhort. Prophecy is never there to condemn, to expose someone's sin, to bring them down. That is not God's heart with prophecy. It is to edify, encourage, and exhort. And the way we share prophetic words, it can come either through that inner voice, that unction of the Holy Spirit. Um, we can either have visions or it can come through dreams. Um, and so the heart of prophecy is basically to reveal the heart of God for someone, for how he sees them, where he's calling them to, what he's leading them to. I tell you, the prophetic words in my life have been one of the most powerful and significant ways that God has spoken to me. And it has been so incredible because some of them are so similar and so line up. And there's a similar thread of what God is saying, but these have been powerful things that God has used to lead and guide me and direct me in what he's calling me to do, how he sees me and just who he's made me to be. And it's because of these words, it's because of the way that God is speaking to me that I've been able to have courage and boldness and confidence to step into who God has made me to be and do what he's called me to do. Now, when it comes to prophecy, it's really important for us to, when we receive a prophetic word, number one is we need to record it because like with our dreams and like with even the inner voice of God, we need to steward the word well. What he is saying is important and we need to steward it well. And so it starts by recording it so that if you want to, you can write it out, pray into it, and then ask yourself, is there anything in this word that I can start doing now, that I can start walking in now, and that I can do to respond to it? Um, because words are not given just for us to put on the shelf and sit there maybe for about 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Some words we will only see the fulfillment in years to come, but there is a process of development that happens when we begin to walk in that word, we, we begin to walk towards that thing and take steps to move in that way. And so when we get prophetic words, it's also very important for us to learn to recognize, is this word from God or is it just something that someone else is saying? And this again is where we check with our inner voice of the Holy Spirit, with the inner peace that we have, 
does this resonate with me that it comes from God and it is God speaking to me in this moment, in this season of my life? If it is, we take it, we record it, we steward it, we act on it. If it's not, we release it and we put it to the side. And again, not everyone is perfect. We have moments where we do miss it. And sometimes we give a prophetic word and we so invested in the person and we love them so much and we just want to speak such good things over them. But like with the advice of godly counsel, does it come from us or does it come from God? And it is so important for us to learn to recognize and discern between those two things. And so in summary, we all hear God's voice, but have not recognized it and followed it. God is speaking, so we need to learn to listen. And so learning and growing, hearing God's voice really is a process of actually learning to recognize how he's already speaking to us because he is already speaking to us. And so I just want to bless you and I just want to pray such a blessing over you as you grow in this journey of hearing God's voice. So Father, we just thank you for this session. Lord, we thank you that there are so many ways that you speak to us. Lord, we thank you that you are pursuing us and that you are not hiding from us. You are not hiding your voice from us and you're not necessarily making it hard for us to work to try and find and discover who you are and what you're saying. Lord, you are so present and so accessible in our lives. And so Father, I just pray for a grace on each one of us as we grow in learning to recognize how you are speaking and how you are speaking to us personally, what that sounds like for us personally. And so Father, we commit this journey into your hands and with faith and expectation, we look to the future of how you are gonna speak and how we're gonna hear your voice and how you are gonna use us to share your voice with others. And so we thank you for that in Jesus name, amen. So I bless you. I trust that this is going to be a beautiful journey that you embark on as you practice hearing and recognizing 